All right, welcome, welcome. Thanks everyone for coming in. I know folks, it's uh, nearly midnight time in Asia. So really appreciate it as always. First things first. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen before, but every weekly dev call, uh, we do upload it afterwards. So uh, last week and every other week uh, is in that playlist that I just sent in the chat. Uh, that's why we record these meetings. This one's recorded, so um, probably an hour or two afterwards, it, it will be on that uh, playlist. So again, really appreciate you all coming to the weekly dev call. Uh, this is number 27th, uh, the 27th week of us uh, doing this together with everybody. So we're always excited to welcome new faces and have old, uh, you know, have folks that have been here since uh, early days and um, yeah. So I think today I don't have much to, to add on top. I think uh, you, you may have already seen the, the <laughs> yesterday I uh, got really excited about an internal post that uh, Jaden uh, shared and I, I, I tweeted it and it, it was in regards to uh, cross-chain uh, transaction uh, for the V3 contracts as a, a precursor because um, technically, during NPC Day, uh, Lens uh, on Polygon uh, did, um, you know, the first cross-chain transaction with token bond accounts, uh, but that implementation was, uh, you know, custom for that um, that demo. Um, and now with V3, you know, it's uh, being thoroughly tested. So, um, yeah, that's super exciting. I think, like, uh, we've been talking about it for probably months now. Uh, and now it's coming uh, in, in, into effect, uh, and um, yeah, it's going to open up a, a lot of new possibilities. So, uh, I think without further ado, you know, Jaden's probably going to do the uh, Jaden and BJ and the rest of the team probably have um, the bigger update on where V3 is at. So I'll pass it to, to Jaden. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Benny. Um, yeah. So the big news of today is the V3 contracts are live. We've deployed them to a series of test nets and to a series of main nets. So you can start playing around with them. Uh, I'll share a, a link to the docs here. Uh, these are different addresses than the beta ones we released uh, a couple of weeks ago. There's been some changes. Uh, most notably, um, there's been a lot of optimizations, gas optimizations to the registry contracts. Uh, many of you who do smart contracts are probably familiar with uh, Vectorized, who's the author of the Solady library. Um, he was super generous and contributed a bunch of really cool um, gas optimizations to the registry. So it saves about uh, 3,500 gas units per deployment. Um, so there's a new set of addresses here. But yeah, V3 is live. And most importantly, that means that uh, cross-chain is now ready to go. So Benny was sharing some stuff the other day about us doing cross-chain test transactions. Um, with these new contracts, there's two new cross-chain modes built in, one of which is currently enabled, one of which will be disabled or will be enabled um, very, very shortly. So the first is native cross-chain execution on Optimism. If you're using uh, a mainnet NFT and any OP stack chain, whether it's Optimism or Base or Mode or Zora or any of the other OP stack chains, you'll be able to do native cross-chain executions using your token bound account, um, just using the Optimism native bridge. And the second one that the folks at Polygon have been very generous in helping us work through over the last little while is using the Polygon FX portal bridge to do the same thing on Polygon. So you'll be able to execute transactions for your mainnet NFT on Polygon. Um, so we're going to test transactions all working. It's all green, which is great. Uh, we're going to be rolling out the some, some guides on how to do that. We're going to be rolling out some changes to the SDK to support that, as well as to the tokenbound.org explorer in the coming days. So the contracts are out. They are live. Uh, would love feedback on them. Would love for you to, to test them and play around with them. Uh, I think this will likely be the final deployment of the contracts unless uh, something comes up. Uh, and if so, we'll, we'll notify you all about the, the change uh, to the contracts. But these are, are ready to go and play around with. So what happens next is we're going to spend the next little while um, cleaning up the docs. You notice a lot of the docs still talk about the V2 things. Uh, we'll be cleaning that up. Uh, BJ's got some updates on the SDK side. And then we're going to be doing a rollout of this on the tokenbad.org site. So um, the contracts are out. They are live. Um, if you are experimenting and uh, want to be on the bleeding edge, feel free to give those a try. And then once we uh, probably uh, next week, we'll have a full 
public rollout of these as well as rollout of documentation and migration to ads. So uh, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff. All the stuff we've been talking about the last couple of weeks with these V3 contracts, now ready for you to play around with, which is pretty sweet. Any questions, thoughts from the community? Going once, going twice. So uh, yeah, maybe I have some questions. So Jaden, um, the crunching aspects of this, um, can you walk us through like a user experience? So let's say I have an asset on mainnet uh, and I want to uh, I want it to post on Lens that's on poly Polygon. Um, yeah, what what is it kind of look like from a UX standpoint? Or right like the, yeah, yeah. So so as of right now, um, the UX isn't hooked up that hooked up yet. But what it is, it'll be just the same as transacting with any token mount account app you're used to. You can connect to Wallet Connect if the app supports token mount accounts natively. You'll be able to connect natively to the DAP as your NFT. Um, and you'll execute the transaction. There will be a bit of a delay because it takes time for the message across the cross chain bridge, uh, but you'll execute that transaction and then you'll see it just come from the token mount account on the layer two. Uh, should be very familiar if you're used to interacting with token mount accounts on the layer one, should be pretty much the same experience. And for V3, the, the gas that you're paying, are you paying every, every transaction, is it like coming from mainnet and L2 or like, uh, how does that work? Yeah, so with this, um, when you do transaction cross-chain transactions on token bound accounts with the V3 version, uh, every transaction will start on the NFT's home chain. So if your NFT lives on mainnet, that means it'll be a mainnet transaction, even if you're really transacting on Polygon or on Optimism. Uh, in the future, that's likely going to change. We're working towards that. Uh, but in the meantime, whatever your NFT's native chain is, its home chain, uh, that will be the chain from which all of the token mount account um, transactions originate. Got it. Is that going to be the case uh, even in the future of like, you know, if projects here want to launch a mainnet NFT and they want to have some sort of experience on an L2, like, is there an option in the future where they don't always have to pay mainnet gas? Yeah, of course, that's what we're working towards. And so um, that'll be the net, one of the next big projects that we work on is getting rid of the mainnet execution requirements so that you can use the L2 token mount account just natively. Um, you'll be able to keep your NFT on mainnet, keep it in your wallet, but still use the token mount account for, for your NFT on any chain you want to use it without paying that main net gas for the transaction. So that's like the next big milestone. Uh, V3 unlocks that in a pretty significant way. It allows us to experiment with the different ways you can do cross-chain execution. Um, so that'll be one of the next big releases coming from us. We've got some uh, neat plans around that that we'll share in the future. Awesome. That's incredibly exciting. I think another round of, uh, of claps, I guess, and and confetti. Um, Pluto, go ahead. Oh, hello, Jaden. Uh, so regarding the uh, uh, account v3 implementation, I have I have two questions. Uh, the first one is that uh, when I try to upgrade PBA with v2 implementation to v3, it seems like the guardian blocks the transaction. So uh, is this uh, am I doing something wrong? Or is this on purpose? No, you're just testing this really early. Uh, we just finished the V3 deployments. We haven't yet enabled upgrades. Um, so there's a couple of things that are still left to do on the rollout. One is uh, enabling some of the bridge access. Uh, so right now, Optimism works with Polygon needs to be enabled, as well as enabling upgradability on the original V2 contracts. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll let you know once that's ready to go. Uh, in the meantime, V3 should work for fresh accounts, and we'll let you know when the V2 accounts are ready to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. So how long, like, roughly how long would that take yeah so the plan is to roll that out next week oh, okay and uh, and the second question is that uh now the tbas will have v2 and v3 addresses at the same time so uh how, how are you going to address that in the uh on the token about website yeah it's a good question so nfts have always been able to have multiple accounts uh even with the v2 addresses there were um at the registry level you can have as many accounts as you want for an nft it's just like 
if you have a MetaMask wallet, right? You have one seed phrase, but as many wallet addresses as you want out of that seed phrase. It's the same paradigm for token bound accounts. So token bound accounts website already supports multiple addresses for NFT. If you uh, deploy using a different version of uh, the account. There are some apps using uh, forked versions of the account contracts, for example. And so you'll see a little drop down at the top. You'll see the NFT's address, and then you'll see a little drop down of the other addresses you're able to use. Uh, very similar to the UI you would expect in something like MetaMask or, or any other wallet there. Um, so that'll be, uh, as we roll out the V3 stuff, uh, that will be uh, part of the token value UIs. You'll be able to switch between your V2 and your V3 addresses. Um, if you are using, if the V2 account is active, uh, if the V2 account is, no, is not active, as in it hasn't been deployed, there's no tokens in it, there's nothing happening with the V2 account, um, the token bound site will default to the V3 account address and show you that uh, as the first one when you get there. Uh, but if you have a V2 account that exists, it'll default to that V2 account. So from your uh, perspective as a token bound user on the token bound explorer, um, nothing will change other than having an additional option under that drop down. Oh, okay. Thank you. No worries. Appreciate you trying things out super early. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass the mic to BJ for SDK updates. Yeah, so I've been working uh, pretty extensively on the SDK over the last week, trying to get uh, get to feature parity essentially with V2 for uh, for the SDK, and it's coming along really, really well. Um, we are definitely in need of updating some of the contracts that were updated last night, uh, but I, I think we're very much in a phase right now where pretty much have feature parity. We need to do some uh, additional testing and uh, myself and Jaden need to get together and, and just go over uh, some of the the latest updates and uh, and additions to create an account, for instance, where there are, there are some slight changes to the way that initialization works so that we can uh, ensure that, that that's in a good place. Uh, but I've already been making uh, on-chain transactions uh, using the v3 implementation of the SDK at this point and uh, we should be in a, a really good place for early next week uh, there will be some breaking changes and we'll, we'll definitely keep everyone uh, informed about that in the docs uh, I think the main thing is that for uh, for v2 implementations uh, that are out in the wild right now we're going to have a version parameter just so that the SDK can direct traffic, essentially, uh, for logic. Uh, there might be some minor changes to the way that it uh, handles older ABIs. Um, and at, as of right now, we are able to determine whether a user is a valid signer or whether an EOA is a valid signer for a uh, token bound account. Uh, we've implemented some new, uh, some new logic for custom salts. And there's a whole suite of tests that is going to be coming down the pipeline to make sure that uh, all of the new changes are rock solid. So, so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, it's largely in place in terms of feature parity right now. Uh, a lot of testing work and documentation to do, but we should be in a good place for early next week. Any questions on the SDK? I mean, one one thing that I want to put out there is um, as you guys are building projects and experiences, and if you are using the SDK, please, you know, provide BJ and uh, Jaden, you know, all your feedback. I know some folks have already. Uh, it's hugely helpful for the team to kind of get an understanding of what you guys are looking for or what's missing. Um, and so, yeah do definitely uh, share your your, uh, your your raw feedback on that. We really do appreciate that. Um, cool. Any questions on V3 or SDK or anything else? No? Okay. Sounds good. Um, are there any new folks here, any new folks that uh, have first time um, joining the weekly dev call? If, if you're, it's your first time, we'd love for you to do a quick intro. I'm just looking around the uh, the room here. 
think. Yeah. Hello. I see oh, yeah, I'm so. the new guy. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. the first time I joined the call. And uh, I'm definitely the new kid in town. Uh, we're doing a uh, kind of, uh, it's uh, it's more like Easter scan, but we put it in a more structural structural way. So we call it uh, ERC, uh, sorry, 6551.xyz. I guess maybe some of you guys have already seen that website. Uh, if no, I uh, can share it later. But we are trying to show, uh, you know, the latest projects, which based on ERC 6551, and also uh, we're trying to, you know, mark this new gears uh, within that TBA. So we um, develop um, extension, which you, if you uh, install that extension, you can see uh, all of these gears under that TBA. So it's uh, it's already done. And uh, you can you can download and try, and also we we have already put all of this data in a, a, a kind of easier way for you to recognize whether it's an NFT 70, uh, 72, 71 or eleven fifty five, and uh, also their their image, so you can see a more like a neat way about uh, the new gear and the new collections, and also kind of uh, uh, integration. Uh, way to show all of these blue chips, how many of their NFT has already uh, has a TBA deployed. So I kind of uh, I see uh, information integration and also some kind of the feature uh, to show uh, to show you know the potential of ERC six five five one. Yeah, that is uh, my brief introduction for our project. Okay, thank you, Benny. That's awesome. Welcome. Where are you calling in from? I'm in Hangzhou. Hangzhou. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks again for joining uh, at a late time. Yeah, definitely share the links in the uh, in the uh, the chat there, and then people could check it out. Uh, that's really awesome. Any other new folks? Young punks. Uh, let me see here. King King Ter Wang. Um, yeah. Hey Benny. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm Kinter. I'm very excited to join this weekly call. Uh, I'm currently working on a story story protocol. Uh, what I'm what I'm currently doing is that we put an IP on chain and going to manage the IP, uh, um, and for uh for the creator, and for uh and also manage royalty. Currently, I'm I'm trying to make this uh IP IP account uh work with our IP. MT and then and they use uh, this IP account to hold this uh, loyalty and the distribute loyalty to the uh, creator itself. So we bound this our uh, account to our IP and they're going to use this uh, uh, kind of loyalty holder wallet for for the IP and they're going to distribute this uh, loyalty to the uh, multiple uh, parent IP. So we're going to uh, use that IP account to do the kind of del deliver the uh, loyalty through the IP graph. This is kind of what I'm doing. I'm just uh, uh, make some MVP in our internal project and it will work well. And very exciting to uh, to see it increase more and more uh, with, along with the to talking about uh, 6651 six, six, project. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome. And where are you calling in from? Uh, I'm in uh, Bay Area. Bay Area. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Cool, I think. Any other new folks before I, I, I we move to the next stage? Uh, hello. Hey, oh, Benny, hey. Jack. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, go Pluto. Okay, so we got Pluto and then Young Punks, all right. Oh, okay. So, hello, this is Pluto. And uh, this this doesn't feel like the first time because I've watched all the uh, YouTube clips that you've uploaded. So thanks to Benny. And uh, I'm a, a software engineer at AOLabs building Spacebar. Uh, with uh, Christy and Juni here. So uh, Spacebar is, is a uh, web-free social gaming platform utilizing 6551 as a building block. And you can you can all bring your own PFP and put it on a spaceship to play games, socialize. And uh, by doing so, you can enhance your PFP's identity. So uh, yeah, So but we're, we're still in a very early stage, so not everyone can join right now, but you can always follow us on Twitter or 
for Discord, uh, which is uh, spacebar.xyz. And, uh, and yeah, and there you can get the idea of what we're uh, actually building. So uh, uh, I hope we can all collaborate to build something fun with 6551. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome, Pluto. Welcome. That's amazing. Um, Young Punks? Hey, Benny, it's Jack. Nice, it's nice to meet you again. Oh, hey, welcome. Hey, hey. So we're we're building a uh, a social media application, open source that every user gets a unique one of one Young Punk that is a sixty five fifty one NFT, and essentially rewarding users of that platform directly into their NFT. We're also working on a uh, a dedicated 6551 marketplace for people to be able to uh, create, buy, and sell traits for young punks too. That's what we're up to. Good to see you again, Jack. Good awesome to see you, Benny. Happy. Yeah. All right. I think uh, that was a good intro round. So I think we can switch into questions. Um, if there's any questions from the community, it could be technical, it could be you know, project, it could be anything, uh, or demos. Um, one caveat I'd say is for the demos that they are, um, you know, if you ra raise your hand, if you do have a demo plant, um, so we can get to you. And then the other thing is, let's ensure that the demos are, you know, between, you know, three to eight-ish minutes or less. Uh, you know, brevity is always appreciated. Uh, if there's things you would like to demo. The other thing I would add is uh, the demos, they don't have to be a working prototype that's uh, on mainnet, right? Um, it, it could also be, um, some folks have, you know, just taken the time to ask questions or do a deck or something. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, you know, demos are demos. So uh, it is meant to kind of like, you know, explore new ideas uh, and to uh, elicit uh, conversations from the community rather than um, pitching. So this is uh, this for sure isn't a uh, like a, a time a time to kind of like a, a, a drop or a, um, you know um, something that's a bit salesy. So we want to keep it more on the building side. Okay, so sweet man, you've raised your hand. Um, we're gonna give you a co-host abilities here one second and then if there's any other folks that are planning to do a demo please raise your hand and then that way we can get to you all right i actually had a question uh, oh yeah yeah go ahead congrats on the v3 launch i'm really excited to start building it uh, the first application i want to build is using any mainnet nft to create a zora drop on op and so I'm just thinking through how I'm going to structure that signature in the code. Is it going to look like uh, I'm setting up a transaction where they're going to be signing something into a bridge contract and I'm going to be making the contract that we're writing to a bridge? Or do I set up the transaction such that they're writing directly to the Zora factory on optimism and then some magic happens behind the scenes? What is yeah, So I guess the question is like, what? go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. For sure, yeah. Um, so it's not deployed on Zori yet, but we've improved the uh, the permissionless deployment scripts quite a bit, so it should be pretty easy for you to run the scripts and deploy on Zora if you want to. Um, feel free to ping me if, you, if you'd like to run through that together. But yeah, so what you'll be doing is you'll be calling into the Optimism Portal contract on mainnet from the token bound account of the NFT you want to do. So the token bound account will call into the Optimism Portal. It's going to call the deposit transaction function, and it's going to pass in the token bound account address as the two, uh, a zero value or more if you would like to bridge some ETH. And then the data uh, in that deposit transaction call is going to be the Zora creation call data. So that's the transaction is going to get executed from the token bound account on Zora. Got it. And do I need to, do I need to think through like how much gas I'm going to need on Optimism? Because out the gate, the first transaction, they're not going to have any ETH over there. And so do, is there a recommended amount of should I calculate like how much the gas cost is going to be? D does the wallet need to have gas on Optimism in order for that transaction to finish? It doesn't. No, the main net wa the main net token bound account will pay the gas, uh, but you will have to look at the gas calculation using um, Optimism. Optimism does have like a gas limit parameter to that 
deposit transaction function. Um, and so I'm not entirely sure how they're calculating that, um, but you can take a look at the optimism docs for that and feel free to uh, ping me if you want to jam on it. Awesome. Final question to find that optimism portal. Do I look on Tokenbound's website or should I look up like optimism portal and then optimism will have docs on that? Yeah, I think optimism has docs on that. We should definitely put a section on the Tokenbound site though. Uh, once the cross chain stuff is ready to go with some details about how to do cross chain transactions on OP. Uh, but for now, I would say uh, optimism docs is the place to go. You want the mainnet optimism portal. Thank you, Jaden. This is incredible. No worries. Actually, clarification on that. You'll want to look at the Zora docs and find the mainnet uh, optimism portal for Zora, but yeah. Awesome. Before I, I, I switch it over, one, one quick thing that I wanted to encourage everyone uh, to try. Uh, we've been actually uh, doing a lot of um, experiments. We're uh, looking into uh, Wallet Connect on several dApps. So, you know, I think a lot of folks here under know that you can log in as your NFT on certain dApps. Um, you can log in as your Azuki on Uniswap or um, your Bored Ape on uh, OpenSea, right, instead of your MetaMask. So one, one quick thing I wanted to to show, um, I think you guys all know my, my All-Stars. Um, I've, uh, I've kind of like prescribed, what's really interesting is I've linked an ENS name. I've named my, I, I'm going to call it my NPC. I've named my NPC uh, B-Roll. That is its name. And uh, B-Roll has been collecting a lot of art on Zora and all of that. Um, even um, one really interesting thing is I've been uh, testing like um, essay writing. So this is one of the first uh, essays that I uh, minted from my uh, NPC. So I logged in to Zora as my NFT via Wallet Connect and then minted a, a collection from it. So um, we're starting to do a lot of experiments around this area and something I highly encourage um, community members to try it out. Um, that's the, you know, that's the best way to kind of like really learn like, oh, wow, like, um, NFTs have really become our social identities and what does it mean for an NFT to generate uh, an essay via like ChatGPT or uh, mid-journey images and, and mint those. So I think, sweet man, you're, you're starting to test like what does it mean to have like a main NFT uh, mint on a different chain or something like that. Um, yeah, that's super cool. So encourage you all to uh, experiment and let us know what you've learned and, and what sort of things you, you, you kind of created as, as your NFT. Okay. So we have several hands here. I'm going to pass it on to uh, young, uh, to Jack. Jack, did you want to do a demo or you had questions? I know you had your hand. No, right? I, I, I did have a question because it's come yeah. up in, in conversations in, in my little incredible community that, that would it be possible to do something like build an extension so that I could pop my NFT, my NPC up next to MetaMask on my browser and, and, and essentially work on a, a more intuitive, faster way to connect to dApps? Yeah, definitely possible. And that's one of the things that will likely be coming in the future as we uh, continue to build out this roadmap. But yeah, you can totally do that. Uh, it is a bit of a building uh, embedded browser extensions. It's a little bit more challenging than the Wallet Connect stuff just because you, yeah. yeah. um, you're you dealing with like window.ethereum or mm -hmm. like whether you want to do the multi-injected. But yes, it's possible. And um, we're like, that'll likely be one of the, the things that gets built fairly soon. That'd be incredible to have a little button right there next to connect as my NFT. Yeah. You know, add it to my, add it as an extension. But yeah, I, I just popped into my head that, that I was asked to ask. So I asked. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. I think the next one's D, and then we'll go Richard and then Paul. If anybody else has questions or demos or anything uh, or any thoughts just raise your hands go ahead dl I'll, I'll give you a uh, co-host if you're sure yeah i probably don't need that just want to give you guys a quick update regarding uh, the kiosk light paper i'm going to drop that in the chat as well 
Um, so basically, uh, here's our vision. Uh, people probably know Kiosk as the aggregator of projects, but we're actually behind the same building a vision that NFTs become applications. So right now we call them smart NFTs. We actually had a debate with Benny as well regarding the name. We probably shouldn't have the name in the, uh, the NFT in the name itself as well, but just wanted to drop the light paper. I think Arjun already dropped it in the chat. So thanks for the community, the token bond community. We got lots of feedback from the community, including Benny as well. So thank you guys for uh, the feedback. Quite like to welcome this group uh, to give us further feedback. And also we open uh, for a partnership and collaborations uh, with projects here as well. Uh, so if you want to build um, an NFT extension, NFT application, talk to us. We can think about cool ideas and build together. So that's, uh, uh, that's what we, I want to share today. The other things we are building a bot. We're building a trading bot. I know trading bot is probably boring in the NFT crowd, but we wanted to build a trading functionality into an NFT. So we built a trading bot called Beep. Uh, right now, it's still on testnet. We'll probably share that in the uh, next few weeks. I like to polish the UX a little bit. Uh, but once we get that in a better shape, we'd like to invite people here as well to test it out and try the first NFT application and get feedback from you guys as well. So stay tuned. We're going to share uh, in this chat in the coming weeks. So that's my update. So you, please reach out to us as well uh, if you get feedback. Thank you, Dee, and the Spartan Labs team uh, and the Kiox team. An amazing, that, that white paper is in, in incredible, like beginning of exploring that idea of the programmability of token bond accounts. Like, I think I, I thought about this quite a lot. Um, you know, of all NFT owners, on Ethereum, maybe one to three percent of the own NFT owners know about token bond accounts, and even less have actually used it. You know, less have logged in as their NFT, and very, very, very few have uh, you know logged into DApps and minted collections like what I have done. Right. So I think that relative to scale, we're all extremely early. Right. And I think a lot of us, out, you know, right now today, 25 folks on this call, um, we're like at the beginnings of understanding what TBAs can do, right? Like we already, um, the cross chain components already uh, in there and, and then thinking about, oh, wh what if you can automate your MPC to do things on chain for you? Um, I know that this week I asked Jaden like, hundreds of questions about flash bots and mev and and so you know trying to think a little bit deeper about what are the on-chain jobs um or tasks that a, a an npc can do um and you'll know if you know if you've been following us for a while you'll you'll hear that we kind of shift between nft and npc and um, for, and we had npc day in new york uh, and so i really do think that NPCs will be the future state of NFTs only once um, programming the on-chain uh, asset um, it, it becomes much easier. So, um, you know, in, in this transition phase, you know, we'll, we might be using NFTs or programmed NFTs or, um, or NPCs. So super cool. Cool. Richard? We'll give you the stage. Um, are you looking to do a demo or questions? If demo, I could give you uh, share permissions. Um, just wanted to share a quick update, but our colleague will most likely demo uh, next week uh, regarding our uh, product. Cool. Yeah. Hundred. Yeah. Go ahead. Cool. Yeah. So, um, hi, I'm Richard from uh, STP. Uh, we're in the autonomous world space, but um, utilizing uh, 6551. Um, we're recently in the kind of beta stage for our uh, product, which is called AWNS, which is short for Autonomous Worlds Naming Service, uh, which is very similar to like an ENS, but more catered towards um, autonomous worlds, on-chain activity, and gaming. Um, right now, we released uh, our waitlist about a week ago um, for it for 
users to claim their um, .aw username. Uh, so wanted to offer that to uh, the 6551 community. Um, we have about like a thousand people on the wait list so far and have around 20 projects um, that have um, claimed and helped promote among, uh, 6551 among their community, a lot in the uh, autonomous world space. Um, and then even a uh, kind of major exchange highlighted um, the AWNS along with the 6551. So it's been kind of great uh, exposure and like the um, AW um, and gaming space for uh, 6551. Um, so yeah, open for kind of partnerships and collaborations if um, any of you have kind of projects that want to claim a um, username, right? That will be a uh, 6051. Awesome. Thank you so much, Richard. I love the, uh, 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 this actually is a good segue to, to Paul and Istanbul, but yeah, I think that there's going to be a, a incredible um, presentations and updates on the autonomous worlds assembly uh, that a few folks are, are, are going. Um, not only that, there are several uh, projects in, in the a a autonomous worlds uh, side that are, um, you know, thinking about NFTs represented in, 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 in those frameworks. Not only that, some folks are looking into token bond accounts. Um, so yeah, I think like, as I said from day one, like the two work really well together, like uh, the autonomous world um, is the idea of constructing um, game states on chain and, and, and that's super awesome. Um, but on every game, you're going to need assets, right? Uh, that can be characters or items and stuff. So uh, TBAs are, uh, are a great way to kind of, um, kind of coalesce the two. So really cool, Richard. Thanks for giving that update. And if you have a link, um, let uh, feel free to share it. And then folks can kind of jump on it. Um, no problem. Awesome. So any other questions before or thoughts? Okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna pass it to Paul and it's regarding uh, Istanbul because that's, I think coming up in less than a month, right? So uh, Paul, take it away. Cool, yeah, thank you, Benny. I'll share my screen if you don't mind. Yeah, give me one second. Actually, I already have a post. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, um, uh, I guess to start just as a bit of a background to the people who weren't at NPC Day. Uh, NPC Day New York was, I think, um, a milestone event. It got, it got people talking about NPCs. And as Benny mentioned, there's a lot of things that we still need to explore around NPCs. We're just scratching the surface. And what OP Games and Future Primitive want to do is, is to push it forward in Istanbul. So I'm currently organizing an NPC Day Istanbul tentatively happening either on November 18 or 19. Um, but I did give want to give a little bit of a vision on what we could do there. Um, and when when I was at NPC Day, Benny, I, I got the, a feeling that this, uh, like, this is what we should do when we want to figure out what to do with NPCs. And I'm reminded of this event back in 2006, I think, wherein, wherein mobile games were just starting up, social games were also just starting up, and Game designers were trying to figure out what they need to do around these new technologies. And there was this event called Project Horseshoe in Texas, wherein they wanted to solve game design's toughest problems. And I'm hoping to do this for NPC Day Istanbul to just get uh, everyone who's going there that's thinking about NPCs and, and figure out uh, what kind of games we should make or what kind of apps we should make using all of these technologies. And I also want to, I guess, uh, bring in Alan, Benny. Alan is one of the core contributors in the cooperative I'm building, the, the new players cooperative, which is also an NPC. And one of the things we want to discuss is maybe let's make a roadmap around um, what are the parts of the ecosystem and in, NPC, in NPCs. And Alan has started a little bit on that. And, and my hope is during NPC day, we, we discuss this together um, and I'm going to bring in a few more speakers to talk about games and NPCs 
and and yeah just have fun um and i'll maybe i'll give the floor to alan and i'll share this uh this little ecosystem app that we're still waiting on we're still working on rather perfect yeah thanks so much paul uh hey benny here everyone um yeah I, I didn't give an intro before but this is my first uh talk about working call i'm working with paul on the new players corporate uh and yeah we just made a snapshot of you know what the ecosystem map uh, should look like or just like a it's like a very working document like we haven't really figured out yet, yet. but uh, on the left we're looking at you know uh, what the current gaming landscape looks like and the different pillars for that and then on the right it's like what what could be the games in the future it will be playing so uh then we're just thinking of like having a spectrum of that and then mapping this out collaboratively in istanbul and that's the idea of having uh, a a collaborative workshop where we sort of map together what this direction should be and then build a roadmap from there. Um, and then some of them, you know, could be, uh, you know, like Paul mentioned, you know, what kind of games should we be playing in the future? But then some other things, uh, including uh, in this part, would be uh, personalized gaming experiences with AI NPCs and then financially autonomous NPCs within games. So, you know, with the integration of 6551s, you know, could, could we have NPCs participate in the game's economy uh, with their own assets, you know. Um, so that was one one of the thoughts there. And then if you go to the right, uh, these are some of the other core themes to explore. So again, it's just a, a, a mapping of different themes when uh, the worlds of sort of, um, you know, NPCs, AI, and 6551 collide. Uh, so what could be these different themes and what could we be exploring? So it's just a, it's just a whole map that, you know, uh, try to create. Uh, again, this is a very starting point. It's almost like a seed. Um, and we want to plant the seed in Istanbul and try to uh, sort of take it from there and have uh, you know people sort of collaboratively um, ideating around these these topics. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I won't take too much time. Yeah, but Paul. All right. Yeah. And uh, if anyone wants to collaborate around Istanbul, um, as I said, we're still planning uh, some of the events around it. Uh, we're finalizing a venue also in the next few days. So I'll let everyone know on the token bound working group once we have like a sign up sheet. This is extremely exciting. When Paul messaged me a few days ago and he's like, hey, NPC day Istanbul. And I was like, hey, let's do it. So. Um, I unfortunately and the FP team, you know, I actually correct me, uh, uh, correction. Uh, Angela from our team might be in this temple. Um, so she'll, if she is, she'll definitely uh, be there. But uh, yeah, FP team, we um, will likely be staying back. And so, you know, Paul and everyone, we're going to be supporting you and giving you all the resources remotely to, to make it happen. Um, and not only that, like, I think it's amazing. I sent the link in the chat, uh, Project Horseshoe um, slash reports. Uh, this week, I've been reading a lot of the older reports about game design and the economy and all that. I, I actually learned about Project Horseshoe. Uh, I think it was either in your kernel class, uh, Paul, uh, or one of them. Um, oh, and nice. uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, I, I've had a bookmark for a while. and. Um, it's there. I mean, the reports are really dense, so I'm not gonna lie. It might be cool to have like ChatGPT summarize, but uh, they're incredibly insightful. Like, one of the things I've been thinking a lot about is you know, tech technology is just tech, right? Like, whether that's blockchain or a server or like you know, decentralized games or whatever, right? Like, that's just tech for the sake of tech. Like, what really is interesting and is needed to be explored is game games and economy design are all about like humans right uh, how do humans kind of collaborate together or or collude together and i mean you see that on a large scale like is is ethereum effectively a game or not right uh and so yeah i think those reports if you read them uh they have universal truths of, around like um all of the things around economies and stuff and uh, i think it could unlock a lot of new ideas within the larger web3 space but uh, i think for tbas and for autonomous worlds and all of that so cool any other questions thoughts demos 
we are 10 minutes out. No. Okay, so last thing. Last thing I'll do. So I know Manuel's here, but I'll send the link in here as like uh, as a quicker thing. So um, yeah, I think uh, we're constantly working with Manuel and the Sea Launch team in updating the dashboard. There are been a several. Um, I think Loot Two was uh, a, uh, from the station team uh, had a lot of uh, volume uh, over the last. Um, well, that website doesn't really. Um, had a lot of uh, folks kind of experiment on it. So that's super exciting. Um, and I think with this cross-chain element, there's going to be a lot more um, lens experiments that are coming down the pipeline. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Jaden, BJ, Ray, uh, anything else to add? Alana? No, that's it. Feel free to uh, ping us with any issues you run into with the V3 contracts, and we're happy to uh, help you sort them out. Yeah, and we're going to do a bigger announcements uh, probably um, Monday or Tuesday next week. So everyone here, uh, you 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 are all aware that V3 is live, um, but we're going to do like a huge you know tweet storm and uh, write up and all of that um, early next week, so the rest of the world will know. Uh, but uh, you guys kind of get in early and, and and play around with it. So. Awesome. So I think with that, if there aren't any other questions, um, we're really excited to see you. And uh, we'll see you next week, Thursday, same time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.